We just put this footer in and I'm going to show you how we did it start to finish. We're putting the addition right here and uh, it's going to be 35 by 45. Uh, and we are going to dig a couple of holes along the foundation and see where their foundation's at. And we just busted our way through the curb so we could uh, get through. We're going to dig this all out. All the soft stuff got to go. Now we got the whole top out of here and what we're doing is finding out the heights of our footer. So, right over there where he is right now, we got a hole because that's where the doorway is going to be. So we have to match the concrete inside the building to the outside. So that's what we're doing. We're finding out where the bottom of our footer is going to be. Today we're going to talk about footers. Uh, right now we're digging out. We're going to put a uh, concrete footer in here. But I want to explain some things about footers. There's basically three types of footers. The first type of footer is to build on a rock. And if you go back into when they built the churches, they built the castles or any big courthouse, they would go right down till they hit rock, they'd come up from the rock, and then they'd stop. Second time, uh, second type of footer is a gravel footer. You put gravel down, just like on a railroad track, you pour your slab, and that's that. Third type of footer, which is kind of modern day, is we put our forms up, we pour our concrete, and uh, that'll be our footer, I'll show you that. And what they used to do in the old days, there was no footers. In the old days, they would just get regular rock, they'd dig their hole, they'd start putting their rock down. And all those old farmhouses and everything you see way back then, that's how they put their footers in. It's basically when you pour concrete, the same thing. Now, when you pour a footer on gravel, or when you pour a footer like this, where you're digging up an old farmer's field, you gotta understand that footers move, and the grounds move, even though they say they don't. When this ground gets real wet, the ground swells up, and when the ground gets real dry, the ground shrinks. So unless you're building on a rock, everything you're doing is secondary. Any building they do anymore is about 35 years old, that's life expectancy. Well, we're gonna show you how we put this footer in. Now when I'm gonna do a job, and it's kind of a little complicated, a lot of people are involved, I put up a sample. And this is my footer, right here on the bottom. That's how my blocks are gonna lay. That's gonna be my brickwork. That's the installation. But if you look down here, I got my three rods. I got it right here, 36 inches. One thing about a footer as a rule of thumb is whatever your block work is, the footer should be double that size. So if this is 18 inches, this should be one's eight, it's 36 inches. So that's that. After I do that, I make myself a pattern, right like that. And I know when I go to the top of my height, down where the bottom of my footer should be. Some people don't do that. It works for me. Everybody got a different idea. And anybody comes on a job, I show them. Here's my chairs. Here's my rods. Here's the thickness of my footer. And I always take a picture of this sample and leave it here. Because there's the job right over there as it goes. So anybody got something to say, well, it, the sample's here already. So I take my sample on a job. It goes right there. And then I basically know where the bottom of my footer is going to be. And then I take a story pole. This is what we call a story pole. I take a story pole, I shoot it with the transit, and I keep moving it as the excavator's digging so we know our heights. As he's digging, what I do is go over here, I put that there, and then I look through my transit right here, and I'm telling him whether he's low or he's high. what I do, I build my corner forms right here on the ground and I carry them over there. Now we're just uh, putting the stakes in and we are checking our heights for the top of the, of the forms. So we're going to look right down the transit and 
see what those tops of the forms are. Okay, you're uh, you're an inch low. We've got our strings up right here. You see the strings that go between our quarters, and then we put our boards in right even with the strings. There's no right way to put it in. You just put it in. In the old days, they just trench dig it. They wouldn't put forms in, but with now all the new rules and regulations, you have to do it this way. Some people use wooden stakes, some people use metal stakes, it don't matter. The only thing it's doing is holding the form in place. Now, get them down so when we screed it, it'll work. And put a screw in it to, to hold it. Everybody got a different name for these, but these are called chairs. Cut them and you set them right here, and then you put your rebar on. Then we start getting our rebar, we're placing it right on top of the chair. Then we just use some tie wire, tie them up, nothing special. We did have it on And then when we drill them holes, we get them right in there, into the other footer like that. Get them right in. Then we put spreaders across the forms that holds the top together so it don't spread when we pour the concrete. rods in the concrete. So I know that I want to make sure they follow exactly where I want them to follow every four feet. So one's going to go here and one's going to go here. I'm never embarrassed to lay a concrete job out dry because then I know when my next block comes up it's right where I want it to be. I always lay it out dry if you're not certain and that'll tell you where you want to be. I'm going to go every four feet, four, eight, twelve. And the next day we start taking the forms off, huh? right? Then we get the forms up. Yeah, when you get these forms off, make sure you clean all the cement off them. These are all thick and you won't be able to do it again. Now, as we put the block up, see this is the rebar right here. That's just caps you put on them so you don't get poked. See how the rebar worked out. So putting a rebar in the footer worked out pretty good, but there's always one that you're going to have a problem with. So let me show you what I do there. Well, I'm trying to get the block over here and it don't fit. So what do you do with an iron rod that don't fit? You bend it this way, you get up a little farther, and you bend it that way. Then you make the rod fit. You see that? Every once in a while you got to do something like that. Now, a couple extra things to know about footers. Any job I went on, whatever the powers were to be, everybody has a different idea on how to put a footer in. I see them where I did a thing on superior walls, they put the footer on gravel, but in certain places they won't let you put it on gravel. If you work in a farmer's field, well, those rules don't apply. And then if another rule is apply, it's all a, a mismatch. And don't forget in footers, sometimes you gotta put steps. This is what the the steps look like. But I got a couple questions here to answer about footers. As far as the rules, the regulations, and everything they got now going on, and the question is, were things better when they were worse? Well, yeah, things were better when they were worse, but then sometimes some of the worst things got better. And the second question, is there any time when you put a footer in and it's wrong, but you could still profit from it? 
Well, yeah, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. They put that in wrong. It's been leaning, and they still let it lean because they make money on it. So a lot of stuff goes around the money thing, but uh, footers is a tough thing. When you do footers, you got to get all the powers to be lined up and agree on what you're going to do before you do it. And if it, they don't want to agree or you don't like what they're doing, don't take the job. Uh, so that's it. That's number one on footers. I didn't show you how to square it. That's a whole different video. So I hope you picked up some stuff. Like I said, everybody does it different.